Hello, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm an independent consultant and also the founder of developer2architect.com. In today's lesson, Lesson 46, we'll be taking a look at an introduction to reactive architecture patterns. Now, the foundational aspect of all of the reactive architecture patterns I'm going to be showing you in future lessons really have its basis on the Reactive Manifesto, which came out quite some years ago. The Reactive Manifesto really tells us that we should be creating systems that are responsive, resilient, elastic, and message-driven. seems kind of simple, but there's a lot of fairly profound things going on with this, this diagram here. Let me show you what they are. First, that we should build systems that are responsive. In other words, the system responds in a consistent, rapid, and timely manner whenever possible. And this is how the system reacts to users. And then that we should build systems that are also resilient, that the system stays responsive after a failure through replication, containment, isolation, and delegation. And this is basically how the system reacts to various failures that happen, even macro or micro transactional level. Also that we should build systems that are elastic. And this is that the system stays responsive under varying load. In other words, how does that system react to changes in load? And all this being tied together through being message driven, that we rely on asynchronous messaging to ensure that loose coupling. This is what ties everything together. Now, when we take a look at the reactive manifesto, it's kind of interesting. All of these individually are not overly difficult to do. We've been doing responsive systems for decades, resiliency and elasticity. But you know what the big challenge is, everybody? It's doing all three of these together. And that's what the arrows really are showing. And it's one thing to build responsive systems, but it's one thing to build elastic systems or resilient systems. But if we build elastic systems, those systems that can respond to varying changes in load, how does that impact our responsiveness? And where do we end up breaking in terms of resiliency? If we tackle resiliency, hardening our applications, really making them the most stable kind of application, how does that impact our responsiveness? And also, how does that impact elasticity? You see, all three of these are all tied together. And that, everybody, is really hard to do. It's not overly difficult to create elastic systems independently of these two, but it's really difficult to create elastic systems that don't impact response time or resiliency. And as a matter of fact, the whole thing that ties all of this ability together is message driven. If you understand and look at the arrows and analyze the arrows, notice that the arrows for message driven are tying resiliency and elasticity and responsiveness together. That's the hard part. And so when we take a look at what this buys us, it's really reactive architecture. Now, let me talk a little bit about reactive architecture versus reactive programming, because there is a little bit of confusion. Reactive programming is a style of programming, whereas reactive architecture really is a way of designing systems using certain reactive architecture patterns to be able to achieve levels of uh, resiliency and responsiveness and elasticity all together. And so when we take a look at reactive architecture, these are the patterns I'm going to be showing you in future lessons. However, when we talk about reactive programming, these are ways of implementing these kind of patterns, um, both as an implementation and also as a style of programming. And so in future lessons, I'm going to be showing you where these kind of tools and frameworks and languages can help in implementing certain types of reactive architecture frameworks. But when we talk about reactive architecture, what it really allows us to do, everybody, is to create self-healing and self-monitoring systems that are self-aware and that can automatically configure and repair themselves and also grow as our company grows. For example, the thread delegate pattern is a pattern of architecture that allows not only for super high performance, but also allows our systems to programmatically expand and grow as our business grows without any human intervention. It is self-aware. And laying on top of this is the consumer supervisor pattern that allows our systems to expand and contract like an accordion almost, on um, both a micro and macro levels um, as changes occur in elasticity. And so that's where that would come and come into play, both responsiveness and elasticity. 
And then sitting on top of the consumer supervisor pattern would be the workflow event pattern, which allows us to handle programmatically correct and handle and address transactional errors, especially those asynchronous transactional errors. And then in conjunction with that for resiliency, the producer control flow pattern, which allows us to apply, apply back pressure to systems, to allow downstream or upstream systems, I should say, to be able to, um, to repair themselves, quite frankly. And then we've got threshold adjust patterns, self-configuring patterns that are self-aware, that can learn about the environment and just adjust some of their configuration parameters. And finally, the channel monitoring pattern um, that's applied to so many of these that sits on top of those so that we can then uh, be able to be self-aware and actually monitor programmatically what's happening in our systems. Now, in future lessons, I'm going to be talking about each of these patterns right here, starting in the next lesson with the channel monitoring pattern, which is going to form the basis of all the other patterns to be self-aware. But this is what reactive architecture gives us. Something that looks futuristic, but everybody, there's no framework or special tools that are needed to implement these. Just plain API and plain messaging. And so for more information, you can go to Software Architecture Monday, where these lessons are, and also see where I'm at in terms of conferences and public trainings uh, in terms of um, developerarchitect.com slash up upcoming-events.html. And so uh, this has been kind of an introductory lesson, lesson 46, on reactive architecture patterns. Uh, what we're going to be doing in future lessons is diving into these patterns. I'm going to show you how they work, show you the implementations of those as well, and kind of some use cases for those patterns. Thanks a lot. This is, again, my name is Mark Richards, and, and thank you so much for listening.